I have. Welcome, everybody. Um, welcome to the candidates' meeting tonight. Um, I'm Richard Kirby, um, normally group manager community infrastructure, but our two CEs have disappeared out of the district, so I'm acting at the moment. So that I've got the role here of, of welcoming you and introducing you to Warwick Lamb, who's the electoral officer, and also our deputy electoral officer, Sandra Hartley. And uh, as Warwick will explain to you, basically, the whole voting exercise is, is run by Warwick and his team, and council basically steps right out of it to a degree. But I'll leave that over to Warwick to explain, and welcome, Warwick. Cheers. All right. Thanks, Richard. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for coming along tonight. I'm uh, going to go through PowerPoint presentation. Where have I put my clicky thing? Right here. Uh, the good news is I've got 51 slides to go through. And I'm going to read every word on every slide. Death by PowerPoint. Not. Uh, I'm going to skip through some of them pretty quick. Uh, I'm going to talk about a lot of things. Uh, but I want it to be a super casual session. Please just sing out with your questions as we go. Uh, you don't want to hear me prattling on for an hour because we'll all go to sleep. It's going to take about an hour. Um, and yeah, we'll just roll through it as we go. I've been doing this for a long time. Uh, I started doing elections in 1986, 36 years ago, which makes me a bit old. Been around the block, seen lots of elections, lots of candidates, dealt with lots of people does mean I have a pretty active bullshit radar, okay? So that means when I deal with people and I deal with candidates, I want people to deal with me straight up because you're going to get a straight bat back. Uh, if the clicker thingy will work. Murphy's not. I've got two screens to look at. I always get confused in this scenario. So you just want to hit the slide to the end. Maybe you go back to the previous one, please. Right, there we go. So as Richard said, my name's Warwick. We're for a company called elections.com. Sandra is uh, the in-house deputy EO. Sandra has been an electoral officer before, so um, she knows just as much as I do. Yeah. And here are all the councils that I work for. Company's based in Christchurch. I live in Tauranga. Travel around. Uh, with 46 councils all up. 39 of those I'm an electoral officer for, plus six regional councils. We do about 200 elections a year, not including council elections. And council elections are ones that we do is the only election that is entirely postal. Most of our stuff is online and postal. So we're doing elections all the time for doctors, lawyers, accountants, iwi, um, treaty settlement polls, universities, unions, Ontario boards of directors, agri-sector organisations all the time. I've got 54 elections on the go at the moment. What's the deliberate mistake I made on that slide? Couple of fish up here. Same photo twice. Okay. Got a few slides about what it means to be an elected member and what the council is about. It is a pretty complex business. 41 pieces of legislation specifically for councils, and about another 60 odd that mention local government in various forms. And those are all the high level things that TDC does, being a unitary authority. So a bit more than the normal council, but you guys will be familiar with this, so we won't dwell on it for too long. Any questions about that? Great. This is probably the most important slide of the night. It is a big deal. It's not a five minute job to be an elected member. It really is the eyes and ears of the community. Uh, 
it's a rewarding role, but pretty complex, lots of things to consider. In the Ken Handbook, um, all those things are set out on pages seven and eight. But I'll repeat, it is a big deal. I sometimes get a criticism of this presentation once I go through this and I go through all the compliance stuff that people say, well, you've done a good job of putting me off. Why would I stand for council? I make no apologies for that. It is not a five-minute job, and I want to make sure that when you do turn up the first council meeting ready to go, that you understand how much work is involved, how much time is involved, how complex of a business it is. So these are key things that an elected member does. More governance versus management. And the council employs just the one person, the CE, who then employs everyone else. Richard, how many full-time staff? Oh, yes, about 390 full-time staff, yeah. Lots of turnover, rates turnover. In the pre-election report? Yeah. Okay. So these are the skills that uh, I set out in the handbook that are handy to have, not a necessity particularly first-timers, uh, but having uh, good people skills, great place to start, and public speaking handy. But not the end of the world. If you haven't done much public speaking, don't worry. As soon as you're on council, you'll have plenty of opportunity to around the council table, convincing your other elected members of the way you might think about things, going to events on behalf of council. It'll soon happen. Key one there, though, is the third, the bottom one. Councillors think district wide. Even though you might be elected from a ward near Patch, uh, you are there to think about what's best for the whole community. Be the eyes and ears of the community as a result. No. Why can't just bring six year old women that perform someone fifty mil? Yeah, that would be right. So turn over 130 mil. So how much time is involved? So say, not a five minute job. 84 council meetings in the last year. So roughly just about two a week sometimes. Council meetings themselves, four to six hours. Wakes up, you know, the whole day. The mayor, pretty much a full-time job. Councillors, 25, 30 hours, sometimes more. During council annual planning time every year, uh, when there's submissions to deal to and, and annual plans to look at, can be 40 hours a week for three or four weeks. Lots of reading of reports and agendas. My other councillors tell me that generally for an hour of a meeting, it's an hour of reading and preparation. So, Andrew, how big are council's agendas? What, two or three hundred pages? Can be. Uh, elected members have iPads, laptops. So, the agendas are provided electronically. Can be made available on hard copy if they want. Can be. Um, so that's a lot of reading, a lot of paperwork. Yeah. So they were compiled um, manually, given out in hard copies. Yeah. So lots of reading to prepare for the council meetings. Uh, you know, as I say, sometimes more than one day a week in the council building. But if you're appointed to other organisations or other committees, then they'll have meetings off-site in the evenings different times. So flexibility is the key. Very hard to do around a full-time job. If you've got a part-time role, or some flexibility. Sure. And that's when they are. So that's the remuneration. 
set by independent organization, the Remuneration Authority, every three years. And uh, there are some allowances for mileage, childcare, and a few other bits and pieces. Any questions about any of that stuff? Okay. So now we'll talk a bit about the election, the election process. So my role as election officer is um, under the Local Electoral Act, which is a pretty prescriptive piece of legislation with 150 odd sections. And my role is to make it a level playing field for everyone. Uh, but what I don't do is I don't get involved in the campaigning space. So what happens in the political world, uh, what candidates might say or do with regards to politics, what candidates might say or do about each other on Facebook, etc., is outside my sphere of caring. I'm not interested. So if someone calls you all sorts of nasty names on social media, don't complain to me about it. Thank you. It's what it is. I deal with the nuts and bolts of the election, not the politics. <coughs> yep. so these are the key dates set out in the Canada Handbook. Uh, of course, nominations open last Friday. Close 12 noon, Friday, 12th of August. Not 12.01, 12 noon on the dot. So you hear me say this a few times tonight. Please do not leave lodging your nomination till the last minute. Of course, signs can go up two months out, 6th of August, same as Nelson City. I deal with lots of councils and they're all different. Some are three months, some are two months, some are six weeks, some are four weeks. Is what it is. Does that work? Does that mean that, like, um, by campaigning at all before the campaign, you're going campaigning on signs or you know, the actual kind of campaign type things on Facebook, will you stay away from that until six? No. Six? No. Six, no. Right? no. Only signs. Only signs. So, you, so there's, no, there's no restrictions on any other campaigning. No. Uh, you know, just flyers, Facebook, anything else, just signs. And what I mean by signs is, Hoardings held up by bits of wood on the side of the road. Anything else you can do what you like. Okay, no restrictions around that at all. So you guys know this better than me. These are the elections up this time around. Five wards, ten councillors, mayor, and two community boards and all of the candidate names on all of those elections are in random order on the voting papers. So every voting paper, the order will be different, including within your household, you and your partner's voting papers, the orders will be completely different. Printed on the fly, uh, each one as we go and by an algorithm. Random, random, random. Okay, so I said before, nominations close 12 uh, midday, 12th of August. If you do leave it till the last minute and bring it in, 10 minutes to go, and there's something wrong, the nominators don't on the roll or, or something like that, and you haven't got time to get it fixed by midday, you're not a candidate. Happened last time to a few people, including that high profile case in Invercargill where the previous MP made a big song and dance about standing for council and how she was going to change the world. Rocked up 10 minutes to 12, second it, not on the roll. Not a candidate. Very grumpy. But this is what it is. Please make sure you give us time to get your nomination verified and checked. Sandra's role is to help you in that. Uh, we're here to make this process as easy as possible for you all. And so please help us by getting all the stuff sorted first, but then Sandra will make sure that everything's right before it gets sorted. If you do rock in at 
two minutes to 12. As long as you're inside the front door of the council, then we'll be able to process that and deal to it. If you're outside the front door at 12 o'clock, too late. However, if you are inside the door and there's a queue of people and we process those in the next you know, half an hour or so, there's something wrong, not a candidate. So make sure you get it right. So all the nomination documents got to be in together. You can't put one in today and say to Sandra, I'll be back next week with my photo. All together or not at all. Just last funny thing here in place. Number three down on the main list. It says must provide evidence because even citizens yep. I've lived here since 1965. Yep. And I'm a permanent resident of the bank. I've never thanked the citizenship. Very key week. Does that mean I'm ineligible? Correct. Got to be in your zone, citizen. Amazing. Okay. Same deal. Got to be in your zone, citizen. Uh, so we do need to see evidence in New Zealand citizenship, birth certificate, passport, citizenship certification letter. Not a New Zealand citizen, under legislation, can't be a candidate. Don't need to grab a copy of it, we just want to see it. Okay. But we do want nomination paper, profile, photo, Evidence in his citizenship, $200 deposit. Can't do it electronically. Our probably preference is to do it. Scan an email. Last time, 75% of our candidates across the country did it by email. So you don't have to come in and do it. No drama. Just make sure you attach all the documents in the one hit. If you're paying your deposit online, it's probably the easiest way. You know, when you pay things online, you can turn the transaction receipt into a PDF and you can print that out or you can attach it as a separate document um, or take a screenshot. Just as long as we can see evidence of the deposit so that we can track it on the bank. Remember that the Nomination paper is a public document. So anyone can come and have a look at it. So you should probably let your nominator and seconder know that their details will be in the public domain. At the same time, um, once nomination is closed, we'll produce a candidate contact list. And we'll probably have it ready Tuesday or the Wednesday after the nominations are closed. And we'll put that up on our website. So the candidate contact list with all of your details will be in the public domain. If you want any of those details to be redacted, then you just need to let us know at the time you put the nomination. Let Sandra know, put an email, tell her if you're coming in, and they, these details won't go in the candidate contact list if you don't want to. Okay? You can use your commonly used name on the voting paper. It doesn't have to be uh, the name that's on the electoral roll, uh, like um, you know, Ted, Ted of Edward. I've got a candidate up north whose name is Paul, but his nickname is Porky. And he has Porky on the voting paper. Another guy whose nickname's Rabbit. There's Rabbit on there. No problem. Just whatever you're known by. Easy, but you just can't have a title or a degree or anything after your name on the voting paper. You can have a party affiliation. It's not really a party affiliation these days. It's more of a slogan or a tagline. I'll show you what that looks like uh, shortly on the, on the example. Uh, you can have you know, Labour Party or he's on first or whatever. If you do, I need a letter from that political party to say that you have approval for that endorsement. Okay? Quite common. Thanks. So there are two other things on the nomination paper you have to complete. One is the other elections that you're standing in. So 
So if you're standing for the mayor and standing for the ward, on each voting paper you have to say in writing to the other one that you're standing for. Now you can stand in as many elections as you like. You can stand for the mayor of Nelson and the mayor of Tasman at the same time, like Evan last time. Uh, you can stand for the ward, for the community board, and for the mayor. No problem. Just Nelson and the mayor of Tasman, they won't They'd be busy. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> right. Right. Uh, <laughs> well, I think I think that's I think that's what the business did last time wanted to do was to get elected and then amalgamate. Uh, like it, it it is what it is. Uh, Two hundred dollars every time. Um, so you know, but yeah, it it's up to. I don't know, you can live wherever you like. You don't have to live in Tasman. You can live in Wellington, stand here. You can live in Auckland. Doesn't matter. You just have to have the nominator and seconder on the roll in the area that you stand. Okay? And then at the same time, you do have to state if you live in the area or not. There's a bit that's printed on your profile. I'll show you this in a sec. It says, my principal place of residence is in the area or is not in the area. All about transparency. Doesn't matter what it is, it's just being transparent as to what you're standing in and where you live. And it's quite a, quite common for people to, to live just outside the boundary of a ward and the, what they're standing in. I see that all over the place. Hi, hey, Jonas. Yep. Oh, yeah. So, uh, Oh, there's a point of thinking you're working for. Okay. Uh, so here's a voting paper from 2016 from Tauranga. Uh, oh, is the laser thing you're working? So you can see here the format of the name, surname, first name, and then underneath it, the party affiliation. With some quite interesting ones. More democracy, less bureaucracy. Bloody good idea. Uh, independent, couple worth nothing. You know, don't, you don't have to have one. Um, community focused leadership. Experienced positive leadership. Well, my favourite, real change in TCC guaranteed. Yes, there was real change in TCC <laughs> with commissioners. Not necessarily because of that. Uh, so, yeah, it can be pretty much anything you like, as long as it's not too long. 38 characters is the max. 38 characters being that space. 38 max. Uh, nor confusing or offensive. And I'm the judge of whether something is confusing or offensive. Hey. How's that work? So there's the nomination paper that's in your pack over the back. So make sure you grab one. The back side of it has um, a bit about the deposit and how you should pay that. And then also the space to put your own bank account details there so that after the election, if you get more than 25% of the votes of the lowest successful person in your election, you get your $200 back. Some candidates won't make that threshold, but most do. All right. What do you have back? Do you have back on this? This is a public document? Yeah. Back oh, back? yeah, sorry. So, no, the, the this side of it is not a public document. So the front side is. Good question. So we've been through this before, but you know, got to be New Zealand citizen. Nominates and seconders on the roll in the area you're standing in. You've got to be on the electoral roll somewhere in the country. Can't be a candidate if you've got a contract for council more than $25,000 a year. If you're a shareholder or a director of a company that has a contract or an implied contract, and you have to get prior approval from the audit office about a stand as a candidate. If you're in that 
situation. Now's the time to do something about that. Talk to the audit office. Go to their website, oag.govt.nz. They've got heaps of stuff on there about what it means, what's involved, and what you have to do. You've got to get prior approval beforehand. You can't be retrospective. So make sure you get that right. As I said before, you can stand in any of those positions, $200 every time. Uh, if you're a council employee, then you've got to resign if you are elected. Can you change your mind? Oh, really? You can change your mind up to the close of nominations. But once 12 noon on the 12th of August is gone, you can't change your mind unless you can provide me with a medical certificate to say that you are medically incapable of carrying out the role if you were elected. Does happen. A lady last time we put a nomination in, the last day of nominations had a stroke. Next week, medical team gave me a letter to say that she would be incapable of carrying out the role. No problem. And we often have, well not often, we sometimes have candidates who pass away during the voting period. Does happen. So, the profile statement. Key slide, this one. 150 words about yourself and what you stand for and your visions for what you do if you're elected. Not about someone else, not about Council CE, about yourself. 150 words max. On 151, I count it to the last word. I'm anal about it. I make no apologies. 150 words. If you give me something that's 153, 154, I'll have a crack at it and see if I can make the I am to I'm, I have to I've, and Tasman DC to TDC, get it under 150, and we'll move on. If it's more than that and I can't get it under 150, I'll send it back to you and say, too late, too long. Give me another one, we've got 24 hours. So make sure you take the time to get your profile right first up. Remember, it doesn't include your name, doesn't include your affiliation, doesn't include the sentence about other elections, doesn't include the sentence about uh, your principal place of residence. You can have your phone number in it, your email, your contact details, you can have your degrees, your qualifications, no problem. I'm not going to verify anything that's in your profile statement. I don't care what you put in your profile statement. If you took porkies in it, your issue, not mine. Once they're signed off, we put them up on council's website, which will be a couple of weeks after nominations close, and they'll let everybody know. <laughs> Colour photo, I'll show you an example of it, taken within the last 12 months. Not your photo from three years ago. In your campaigning though, in your signs and then, you know, all your stuff on Facebook, you can have whatever photo you like. It doesn't have to be within the last 12 months, it can be 10 years ago if you want to. It can be Photoshop as much as you like. It's just the one you give me for your profile that has to be within the last 12 months. No hats, no dark sunglasses, no pets, no parrots, no cats, no trees, nothing unusual, no other people, just a head and shoulder shot of yourself. Nice and simple. Take it on your phone, no problem. <coughs> Decent background, can be professionally taken, doesn't have to be, um, as long as it's decent resolution. Don't rip off a photo off your Facebook page and send it to me as a head and shoulder shot, 72 DPI, really low res. When we print it, it'll come out, you'll look like a fuzzy bear. You won't want that. You'll pixelate. So decent, 300 DPI, which is what most phones take it at. Um, take your time to get that right. DPI means dots per inch. Don't be too worried about that. Just a decent high res photo. You can give us hard copies. Uh, we can scan a hard copy, same deal, decent resolution. We'll crop it to head and shoulder shot to the right size. Don't need to worry about the size of the photo. Just make sure it's decent res. 
Okay, does it make sense? Great, good idea. And there's a really good example. Intelligent looking fella. Taken on the last few months. Not. Here's what the format is, and there's my affiliation proven, dedicated, real. Sounds like me. Then the sentence that says my principal place of residence is, and I'm also standing for, and then you start your 150 weeks. So all of that, not part of the 150 weeks. Okay. If you're standing for more than one position, you can have different profiles in each one. We just need to know. You can also have 150 words in English and 150 words in Tadaya. Or 150 words in Tadaya. The Tadaya just has to be substantially the same as the English. I have a Tadaya expert on my staff who reads them, who checks they are consistent, but don't try and have me on. Mike. So the profile can't be submitted in English, but you also submit that in Tadaya. Yeah. And it will be put in English and Tadaya. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. One after each other. Yeah. Printed in a daily booklet, in a little booklet that goes in an envelope, two up on each page. Pretty straightforward. Any questions about that? Key part of the process, get your profile right. Don't have to supply a profile or a photo. Some candidates won't, and then it gets printed next to your name, no profile supplied, no photo supplied. Fine. So as you will be aware, it's like my automation um, is to put in yep. profile and put a photograph in there. Yep. When it's an affiliation, I can understand the uh, yep. concept of affiliations. I've got to put a board, but it's yep. okay for me to see that in the yep. summer. Yep. And also, like, um, yeah. 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 That that that's okay. But why do we know about it? Yeah. For your affiliation, I'd want you to come in and grab your nomination paper and write it in there and initial it, so we know oh, that. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Tasman did this last time, uh, and quite a few councils. They were the only council that did it. Two thousand nineteen. Quite a few councils this time are going down this path. Uh, just another medium. Video your profile uh, and put it up on council's website. <coughs> Sorry, I think it was. Yeah, yeah, they had truckloads of hits. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Good idea. Level playing field for everyone. Same process. Same way of doing it. Um, good idea. So, a couple of slides about campaigning. Not to get into this too much, but a um, couple of things. No campaigning or electioneering on council premises. So you can't rock up to a council meeting here, sit in the back row, and then whip out a vote for me sign. That goes on the live stream at the council social media audience because it's council's social media audience, not your social media audience. Just the same as an elected member around the council table here can't come into the can't come into council chambers wearing a vote for me t-shirt or a cap saying make Richmond great again or something. Yeah. Um, can't campaign council premises. There will be a sign on the door if there isn't already saying no campaigning on council premises or in the council chambers. Council resources can't be used for campaigning 
can't use the council logo, all their colours associated with that. Can't take a photo of yourself standing in front of the council building with the council logo and the name behind it. All that common sense stuff. Although, in my experience, sometimes common sense goes out the window in elections. But my job is to rein it in. Uh, any piece of campaign material, every piece of campaign material has to have an authorisation on it. This little sentence at the bottom that says, authorised by candidate's name, contact details. It used to be authorised by your name and your physical address. Physical address. No longer required. Changed on the 1st of July due to all the privacy stuff that's been going on around the traps. You guys know probably know about this more than me, all that stuff about sheriffs and people being concerned about their safety. It's changed so that it can be just your contact details. Phone number, email, link to a website. Even on your Facebook page, the about section, authorised by. Every piece of campaign material. What do I say? What do I mean by campaign material? Anything that is a call to action. Vote for me. Okay? Even a banner towed behind a plane in the sky. It's got to have an authorization on it somewhere. It doesn't say how big or small it has to be. Legislation doesn't mention it. It just has to be on it somewhere. So, you know, the size of a sign, you can have a sticky label in the corner. It says, authorised by. As long as Sandra comes along, pops out of a car, stands in front of the sign and goes, oh, yeah, you can see that. Just has to be there, on the front, not the back. Be truthful about the stuff you put in your advertising. If someone complains to the Advertising Standards Authority, they have a process for dealing that with that, and I'll be onto it pretty quick. So it just makes sure that you're factual. And those are the things that you can't do. Actually, we'll go back one. So you can take council's posts about anything on Facebook and send it out to your audience. No problem at all. And you can send it out with some campaigning message if you like. I just don't want you to respond back to council's Facebook page because that then appears on council's social media channel, not your social media channel. So take it forward, don't go back. Easy. No liking, no tagging, no rating or reviewing, all those things that are on that list. Yeah. Just to clarify, I, I have a habit of posting council statements and things like that. To, to your audience? Um, yeah, I, I'll take a tag district council site. Yep. Say, for instance, uh, there's a bonfire and they've uh, prosecuted something. I will then post that yep. and put my comments on. Yep. Does that have to stop? No. Just as long as you don't respond back to the council page. Oh, yeah. So no electioneering or campaigning can happen on the council. Yeah. Social media, even if it's not campaigning, if it's just you doing that stuff, but technically using that audience to get your name out there, no. So council's comms team, Chris and his team watch this stuff. Anyone who posts stuff on council's social media channel about candidates, about electioneering, zap. If you continue to do it, you would be blocked. So, yeah, you know, and this stuff is a bit tricky, you know, shades of grey. Just just check with Sandra, just ask, you know, we know how to deal with this. I had a council yesterday that blocked three people for spamming their Facebook page with campaigning crap. Does happen. Council social media audience, not your social media audience. When you get your voting paper at home, and you tick the box next to your name, don't take a photo of it and post it on your Facebook page. Someone will. It's against the legislation. Okay? I'll jump on it real quick. You won't want to have a grumpy work. Uh, with Facebook, um, you probably guys know this better than me, but you, know, you can do 
I've lots of work they call it. You do boosted ads on Facebook where um, depending on the IP address of where you're from geographically, it'll bring up ads from candidates that are in your area. Quite a good thing to do. Cost some money. To do that, you now these days have to register with Facebook as a politician. You have to jump through some hoops, provide some ID, they'll verify you, and then allow you to pay for it and go from there. <coughs> Signs, my favourite topic, signs, not. Been in the media far too much about signs recently. 6th of August, as I said before, in TDC, candidate signs can be on private land for the same period, two months, should say two months, not nine weeks. Uh, funnily enough, in Nelson, they've got slightly different rules, and TDC candidate could put a sign in Nelson, but not the other way around. It's happened before. Waka Kotahi have some pretty anal rules around signs on state highways. They don't take any prisoners, they take signs down and ask questions later. So make sure you get that right before you put a sign on their highway. Same with Transrail, they get a bit grumpy about it on their, their land. Remember that the cost of the framing, holding up your sign, is not an election expense. Strangely, the wood, holding it up, not. Cost of the sign right a bit, sure. So therefore, there's no excuse to oh, stick your sign up with some flimsy wood that blows over in the wind all the time. Put it up with some decent wood so that it stays there, not part of your expenses. Any questions about signs? This leads me on to donations and expenses. That's right, they do. You don't. You don't. Sorry, no. No limit. But please don't put them up early. Not even a few hours early. As has happened in other places recently. Um, so part of your campaign is you have to record your expenses and donations for the three months period. But with donations, you have to record any donation that you receive at any time for your campaign, even if it was last year. So if someone's given you $1,000 and said, this is for your campaign, you have to record that, including who it is from. Even if they say to you, here's $1,000, but don't tell anyone. If you know who it's from, or you can work out who it's from, it comes out in your bank statement, you've got to record who that person is. These days, you really can't accept or get an anonymous donation. Unless perhaps someone rocks up with a white paper envelope and sticks it in your letterbox in the middle of the night that you can't see who it was. Yep. This is an issue for me. Yep. Chosen the last election, I noticed a candidate had around $9,000 worth of anonymous uh, donations every day or so. It'd be hard to do. That's not if the candidate knows who they are from, they have to record it. So as long as he says, I don't know who they're from, that's good enough? Is, or... No. No. I'll say it again. If the candidate knows who it's from or can reasonably work it out, they have to record it. If they don't, Someone can make a complaint, or pass it to the police, the police will investigate. Okay? Because that donations document, it's a public document, goes on council's website for seven years. So unless it is a truly and utterly anonymous donation, and I'd ask, how could that be? Good luck. Yep. Well, those... If it's in three years. Donations of the same amount of money every couple of days. 
and uh, not just thousand dollars worth. Yeah, you know, if if it's from three years ago, that document should still be on council's website, as an example. Um, so be careful about that. It gets tricky when it when it becomes third party donors, but the same deal applies. Uh, I would think so. So give a little and um, I'll send you the pledge me, those guys, they do not provide fundraising services for candidates because their systems do not meet the disclosure rules around who's provided the donation because they can't tell who it is. They have to record it. Yep. Can't see it, but I'm just interested to understand that that point there. Because so if you can't get belted, you know, it must be given to the other parcel. That's what's gas means. Keep. Correct. It's just so nice. So it gives you a two grand donation. It's obvious. You got to get five hundred pounds. That's not actually. If 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 you receive a donation, if you receive a single donation for more than fifteen hundred, the balance over fifteen hundred, if it is truly anonymous, has to go to the council. They could have packed you in there. No. Just, no. Just, no. Just no. Money. <laughs> <laughs> it's not, no, it's not a generating money thing. <laughs> it's all about being transparent with who is <laughs> supporting your campaign. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, this 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 legislation is is painful at best. And as a candidate, I implore you to make sure that you comply with it. And if you're unsure, get some legal advice because it gets really messy. Just the same as you don't have to accept the donation. You know, someone might give you $500. You can say, well, I don't want it. Because if you declare it, it goes on your return, public document, anyone can see it, you've got a conflict. And if that person then brings an item, if they're a property developer, for example, and they bring an item to council during the next term, you may not be able to partake in the discussion because you've got a conflict, which has happened many times. So be careful about accepting what may be an innocently given deposit. So it may not be the case. Maybe on the public record, be careful about that. Okay, enough about donations. Read the section in the handbook. There's a maximum amount that you can spend, maximum amount, including GST, based on the population of the area, which is why the numbers are all different, of the population of the area that is up for election, not the electoral roll, the population. You can spend nothing, it's okay. You just have to put in a return that says nil. You have to submit a return even if it's nil. Don't get your two hundred dollar deposit back until you put that return. Yeah. So we were talking earlier before about um, Facebook posts. We were talking about posts on Facebook posts, yep. including um, yep. that expenditure. And you mentioned at that point, you said, like any Facebook post that has a call to action, like vote for me or go and mine for me or some crap like that. So a Facebook post that doesn't have a call to action, it that just goes, you know, this has happened and that's happened, and I'm going to um, sort that out. And you push that, but it doesn't have a call to action. That doesn't actually need to be included. Uh, that yeah. depends. It, yeah. No call to action means you yeah. sign your question. Yeah, yeah. Like Shades of grey. Yeah. Is it, and the question I would ask is, is it part of your campaign? Well, so, it's different from, like, it's got a call to action or not a call to action. It's, now, it's, it's a party campaign. It's quite different from has it got a call to action or hasn't it? It needs to be clear. It's just something like that. Shades cool. of grey. Oh, I don't think Shades Grey is really something here. Yeah. I'm not the judge of this. No, no. Well, you are, largely, because you said you make the decisions on whether, um, whether things are, you know, white or fair or... Some, some things. Today. When it comes to the donations and the expenses, you file your return, because up on council's website. If someone complains to say, you might miss something, I'm not the judge of that. I'll just take that complaint, pass it to the police, the police will investigate. So the police will make a call as to whether I'll go and ask you if you include this or what or whatever the reason is, and they'll determine whether that's appropriate or not. So my advice is be transparent. 
um, because it might come out in the wash later. Well, the things you're asking about, it is a bit shades of grey because the legislation is not that clear around so that sort of stuff. That. Did you believe you're doing the contract spell not transparent? Put it there, Michael. You say things like right. transparent. Implies that you're not being transparent if you don't put it there. Yep. If you're working within the legislation, yep. the legislation call to action, yep. you have to, you have yep. to announce that. You don't yep. know that. Right. No call to action. Don't. Then you're not being not transparent. Yep. Sure. That you don't announce that. Right? Yeah. So, yeah, 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 that's fair. Yeah. Yeah. I've covered most of that already. Oh, on the side of my phone. Oh, yeah. Remember, it's not about when you pay for. The campaigning, it's about when the activity is, when the activity occurs. You could have put a full page ad in the local paper on the 7th of July saying how wonderful you are, outside the period, not including the expenditure attack. 8th of July, it is. But we're past that now, so this is what it is. You can meet someone down the cafe and shout them a coffee as a candidate, you can't say, I'll get this for you if you vote for me. That is treating. You can't go to the pub, shout to your mates, say, oh, I got this round, all good, if you vote for me. Against the legislation. We are a country of dividobbers. We will hear about it. You'd be surprised the calls I get to say, I heard so and so shouting someone a drink about voting. It's against the legislation. Just the same as it is giving away a pen or a fridge magnet or a pad with your name on it. It's an item of value, it's bribery, it's against the legislation. If you do that, someone complains, goes to police, police will investigate. Questions about that? There's a whole section in the handbook with all these offences near the back. Uh, pretty prescriptive. You should have a read. A few photos of interesting signs. Uh, so one on the left. This one, this one, this one. That's a good sign. Your name, circle, ticking it, no problems. There's your authorization. Can be down here. But that one can't have, because it looks like an imitation voting paper with your opponents and nothing next to them or across next to them. That is deemed to be showing people how to vote for one person or, and not another and is against the legislation. I had a candidate do this 2004, an election, got prosecuted, didn't end well, or the front page of the paper, didn't help their election. So please don't go there. Me and Michael, and Horror Fenua, stood again, some of you might know Michael. Cars, sign written, no problems, authorization on the back, great. What's wrong with that photo? That is the council building. That is a council car park. Council logo and name was just over here. No, Michael, can't park on the council premises in a council car park right outside the building. So I asked him to move it, park it down the street where anybody else could park. He wasn't very happy. But he felt he got really grumpy. It was all over the paper. This is what it is. Here's Tina out with a chainsaw. Got a lick. Brady, up belly. Life science sign of a man holding a sign. Quite clever. Got elected. Not sure. I guess I'd say less than lots of other people's signs. I don't know. <coughs> 
You might remember this one. It was all over the news. <laughs> I'll do my best, but I can't promise it, Ellie. <laughs> From March. No authorization. He was not a candidate. <laughs> it was just someone who was having a bit of a laugh, put a sign up on the main road in Tauranga on the first day of voting, just as a piss take. Everyone loved it, went on the news, was viral. The council enjoyed it, and they left it up for the voting period. Not a candidate. <laughs> and then on the first day of voting in Horofenua, where Michael was, We had that up. <laughs> the council took it down within about half an hour. <laughs> Just didn't expect. Bit offensive, but you've got to have a sense of humor, don't you? Okay. Yeah, getting in the end. A few slides about compliance stuff. Uh, the lecture, um, the lecture rolls are um, currently out. The prelim roll. Where's the prelim roll? Is in the office at the library? <laughs> Printed document. Uh, candidates can purchase a copy of it. We can't provide it to you electronically, hence the legislation. Um, you can, as a candidate, register with the Electoral Commission and purchase a copy of it. I can't remember what the fee is. I think it's something like five hundred and something dollars, and I'll give it to you in an Excel spreadsheet. See you soon. We can't do that. Closes on the 12th of August, so you've got to the 12th of August to change your address details if you've moved and you've forgotten to do it. Because if you don't do it by then, then your voting papers will get sent to your old address and you won't get them. So, friends and family, in that case, remind them to update their details. Can be done real easy. You can do it on the um, vote.nz website. Takes a couple of minutes, simple. On your phone. Yep, as is the phone number 0800 36 76 56. Something like that. In the handbook. Um, yeah, no, as candidates, you can share that information about getting enrolled. Yeah, no problems. Okay. Which then leads to if you don't get it, if you haven't updated your address, you can come and do a special vote during the voting period, not before, during the voting period at the council offices. Bit of a process to go through. It takes probably 10 minutes. Um, we can post them out to you, but we've got to make sure there's enough time for you to get it back, so it's better to come and do it in person. If you haven't received it, or you've lost it, or the dog's eaten it, the kids are chucked in the fire. Just come in this special way. Who knows where their New Zealand Post street receiver is? It's your post box. Your post box. Yeah, your post box. Sorry, official word, street receiver. Hard to find. How many orange bins have we ordered? Seven. Seven. So we're, we're doing initiative this time with, there's 43 councils have done this around the country where we're getting bright orange wheelie bins, basically the same as your wheelie bin at home, but road cone orange that we are putting out in places around the district to make it easier for people to put their votes back to, rather than your, what do you call it, post box because posts keep taking them away. So watch out for that. Sandra and Jenny will sort that out, and Chris will do a big comms campaign at the time to say where they're going to be. Might be you know, a general store somewhere, it might be supermarkets or service stations or something, somewhere like that, um, but places around the district that cover the district properly. Right right yeah. Yeah. yeah, so hopefully that'll make a difference. Um, so yeah, and you and you as candidates, you can promote people to, you know, remind people to do it and tell them where they are. 
Actually, that's a good point. You could do that. You could do that. You could do that. It won't do very long for the police to knock on your door, though. <laughs> yeah, so, um, yeah, keep, keep a look out for those. Um, and, yeah, new initiative, way to go. After that, after the result, um, oh, sorry, I'll go back to that one. Um, so we'll produce the results, send it through to Sandra mid-afternoon on the Saturday, probably about one-ish. And then Sandra and Kenny and Richard and probably the CE will get on the phone and ring everyone. After that, we'll then punch it up to council's website and the rest of the world will know. That result on the Saturday won't include the voting papers that are put in the orange bins on the Saturday morning, but we'll include everything up till the Friday night. So it'll be 90%, 90%. 293% result. And if the margins are clear, then it's unlikely to change. Close is close, does happen. And we had a couple of recounts last time, you might recall. Uh, we won in Queenstown where there was a margin of one, where there was a recount and it ended up being a tie. Um, and it toss a coin. Is that the that's the legislation. If it's a tie, toss a coin. It was quite funny because it was on the news and the electoral officer tossed the coin and got a bit excited, tossed it to the no, either backwards. <laughs> <laughs> Going around trying to find it. And you're just making sure that we don't think it was you. It wasn't me. <laughs> it wasn't me. I can't guarantee that I wouldn't do that either, though. <laughs> the pressure's on. <laughs> no, no. Um, yeah, it does happen. If it's a tie, toss of a coin. Uh, yeah, 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 legislation is what it is. The, 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 the legislation actually says drawing lots, so te technically, you know, you're drawing straws, but it doesn't go under the supervision of, a, of the judge or court official or JP. Uh, of course, you you heard about that recount application at Wellington that I had last time with Merity, where it was sixty votes over fifty five thousand votes, and a losing candidate. Um, what's his name? Mr. Lester took a recount application, and um, the judge determined after reading all the information I provided that it wasn't close enough to warrant a recount. So when you go for a recount application, you do have to provide a justification to the judge as to why you think the result. Is <laughs> no, <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't, no, he already got that. <laughs> he didn't want to lose the seat of power. <laughs> you know, he'd already, he'd already got that. Um, but yeah, it is what it is, so, you know, Recount is a recount, close as close. Um, so Would once... No, it's not free service. A recount application, you have to pay $750 to the court as a deposit. The judge will then determine whether he refunds that application, that deposit or not, entirely at his discretion, his or her discretion. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. And after that, the final result, which is a few days later, the CE will then call the first council meeting, uh, which is a bit of pomp and ceremony, quite a big deal, friends and family involved, uh, pretty cool exercise, um, and where there's the official swearing in of the elected members. And after that, you can then start to act as a councillor or the mayor. When's that scheduled for? Oh, yes, you got there. Thursday, 27th, yes. I think we'll do the formally as the successful candidates 
So, and then there's an induction process after that. that every council does that. Happens. So there's the documents. You've got all those in your hands. You got the pre-election report as well, and the handbook, etc. Check anything out. Ask Sandra if you want to know anything more. Uh, and that's it. So that's the end of the slides that I've got for you. Um, happy to have a chat about anything you like, including how the All Blacks are going or not. Um, but yeah, this is what it is. No apologies for all the compliance stuff that I talked about. As I said before, you know, our job is to make it as easy as possible for you guys to get over the line as candidates. So please don't hesitate to sing out with any questions. Uh, we're here to help. Thank you for coming along tonight. Appreciate your time. Uh, it's taken us an hour, so this is what it is. Thank you. Thank you. No worries. Thank you.